Hey, it's Big T. Today I thought I would tie a couple variations of a squirmy worm. Um, lots of people have videos out on this fly. Um, but I figured I would go ahead and do it for those of you who subscribe and want to see a couple different ways to tie this. First thing I'm going to do is get this out. This is soft soap. This is a dirty fly. You might want to wash your hands. I laugh though. People that I hate to call them purists because I guess I kind of was that way when I started tying. Was only going to tie brown things with black beads and really stick with feather and fur. But as I started fishing, I realized there were a lot of things that caught fish more effectively at times, and might as well venture out to that. I think even a purist comes off as high horse when uh, when you're out fishing them with a fly like this. Um, this is a size 12 2x nymph hook with a 3.3 millimeter tungsten black nickel bead. The thread I'm using, I am stepping up the size of that. And I think that's important um, because it's not going to cut through the squirmy material as easily. Um, particular material I'm using is something that I've got in the store. It's my own brand of uh, squirming and it, um, it's kind of a in-between point between a couple of the popular brands. It's, it's, it's got enough movement on it that I like it. I like the diameter, but it's, um, not, it's not terribly, uh, I've had some that tear up real easy, and if you let them sit in your fly box for like two months, they're disintegrated. So, uh, one thing to note, do not use glues with this generally, unless it's a water-based glue, um, or it will disintegrate the material. So we're going to wrap our thread back to the back of the hook, and I'm going to tie this worm in, and I want to get it where I've got about an equal amount hanging off the tail and off the front, and I'm going to do about four loose wraps around there. Then I'm going to pick up both pieces and come around back in front and around back just to really secure that down. Wrap my thread back up to the top and on this variation I'm actually going to twist my squirmy material around the hook shank three times up to the top and then come over top of this three or four times. If you've got a really thin thread, these are the areas that you can possibly um, cut through that material. That's why I go with the thicker thread. So we're going to do that and then go straight to the whip finish. And call that a done deal. There are times when everything's not going to line up straight. Um, I don't get real concerned about that because they do fish fine either way. Um, it doesn't stop the movement of that fly. The next fly I'm going to tie on a jig hook. Now traditionally, this is a size 16. We use slotted beads for these jig hooks. I'm going to go with a countersunk bead on this particular fly. If you noticed on that last one, the fly stuck up, or the, the, the worm material in the front stuck up a pretty good bit. If I go with a countersunk back here, it does have a tendency to lay a little flatter. Uh, by the way, that worm color we used there was a, a white. I have found that color to be pretty productive in dingy um, conditions. and have liked using that. 
Uh, the next one I'm going to use is more of an olive green. And again, we're going to start that sucker the same way. Just by doing several loose wraps in the back. And coming up over top. And back around. Just to really secure that, but secure it not hammering it down with tension. Keeping it loose. This time, rather than wrapping the worm, I'm just going to come up to the top. And make four or five fairly loose. You notice I'm not really hammering down. I'm not going to get tension until I've wrapped around the front above the material several times and then come in with my whip finish. And as you can see, super quick, super easy. These are definitely deadly flies in the right circumstances. Um, something you definitely have to have in your in your fly box if it's if it's been raining and at least give it a shot i uh, hope you enjoy the videos and if so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and visit my website for these materials and more at bigtflyfishing.com